let me ask you this question. Who is your competition? We have no serious competition. A few years ago, Elon Musk took it for granted that his beloved SpaceX would be the first private space mission to land on Mars. But if you ask him today, he's probably not so sure anymore. SpaceX is facing an ongoing threat from a new underdog, a young founder that's stealing Elon's ultra-talented employees. The modern space race is heating up. More capital is being deployed to space exploration initiatives than ever before, an industry that has skyrocketed to $447 billion globally and is expected to hit a $1 trillion market cap by 2040, according to Morgan. Stanley. Sounds like we're hitting escape velocity. Since the Cold War, space exploration has remained an activity that wealthy nations pursue for prestige, glory, and military advantage. Profits have never quite made it into the equation. Building and launching rockets into space is simply too difficult. It's literally rocket science, and it's an incredibly expensive endeavor, especially if the rockets can't be reused or produced at scale. But this is quickly changing. In 2015, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin launched a rocket to space and landed it on a launch pad in West Texas. One year later, Elon Elon Musk and SpaceX successfully landed their Falcon 9 rocket on a drone ship at sea after delivering cargo to the International Space Station. In 2021, both Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson traveled to space in their supersonic suborbital rockets, and SpaceX launched Inspiration 4, the first human spaceflight to orbit Earth with only private citizens on board. With the likes of Elon, Bezos, and Branson all vying for interstellar domination, it's not surprising that space is seen as a pissing contest for old, incredibly wealthy men. But if you pay close enough attention, you'll notice that this is a gross generalization. Tim Ellis and Jordan Noon are 31 and 29 years old. They're former Blue Origin and SpaceX employees, and now they're going head to head against their former bosses. As co-founders of Relativity Space, Ellis and Noon plan to revolutionize how rockets are built and flown. Instead of building rockets from scratch, they're 3D printing them with the ambitious goal to land on Mars by 2024. Relativity Space is stacked with talent and they've already recruited hundreds of former SpaceX employees. Together, they pose a massive threat to Elon's goal to make it to Mars first. I spent hours pouring through research reports, podcasts, and interviews to figure out what's going on. Who are these young underdogs? What gives them the courage to compete against the world's two richest men? And what are the the odds that they actually win. 3D printed rockets. Rockets built and flown in days instead of years. That is the mission at Relativity. 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 In this channel, we break down incredible business stories using knowledge from the fields of finance, economics, computer science, and psychology. Why? Because real knowledge is derived from studying core concepts and fundamentals. As a former Wall Street banker and startup founder, I've learned that the best way to understand new market trends and business models is to use a research-driven and multidisciplinary approach. If that sounds like your vibe, you know what to do. All right, buckle up and let's go. During the four years between 1968 and 1972, Apollo sent nine missions and 24 astronauts to the moon. Space exploration exploded, and more than 650 million people watched Neil Armstrong take one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind, on their television sets on July 20th, 1969. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The first moon landing remains one of the most watched televised events in history. In the 50 years since, space exploration has progressed at a much slower rate. To understand why, we need to travel all the way back to 1957 and investigate why space exploration as an industry took off in the first place. History changed on October 4, 1957 when the Soviet Union successfully launched the world's first artificial satellite into space called Sputnik. It was a tiny satellite, only the size of a soccer ball, but the event marked the start of the Space Age, a historic time period in which the world's two superpowers, the US and the Soviet Union, engaged in a fierce battle to show off their technological and scientific prowess. No nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. As economists, we understand that competition is an incredible force for innovation. Sputnik's successful launch caught Americans by surprise and ignited public fear that the Soviets were leading a significant technological advantage over the Americans. If the Soviets can launch satellites into space, can they also send missiles all the way to the US? Struck by paranoia, American policymakers and Dwight Eisenhower's administration were pressured to step up their game. Only 32 days after the first Sputnik launch, the Soviets launched a second satellite into orbit. Sputnik 2 was built to include a sealed cabin, radio transmitters, a thermal control unit, and a two-year-old husky terrier named Laika. Laika was sadly never intended to return to Earth and died from overheating only a few hours into the flight. The US responded by successfully launching its first satellite, the Explorer 1, in January 1958. But this wasn't nearly enough to show off America's might. 
The US prided itself with being at the forefront of technology and science. Eisenhower established NASA in 1958 to keep the country's long-term space initiatives alive, and NASA has continued to make important advances in space exploration since the first moonwalk. NASA played a key role in the construction of the International Space Station, which was built in 1998 and cost $150 billion. NASA spends approximately $3 billion per year to keep the ISS running, and until the turn of the century, space as an industry was primarily financed using government funds. In the early 2000s, Elon Musk began to branch out from electric cars and founded SpaceX with the ultimate goal to make humanity multiplanetary. SpaceX and its engineers led a bold initiative to lower the cost of space travel by developing reusable rockets, and they've succeeded beyond anyone's wildest imagination. Its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets brought reusability into the mainstream. NASA space shuttles used to cost an average of $1.6 billion per flight, which is $30,000 per pound of payload. Today, SpaceX charges around $62 million per launch for its Falcon 9 rocket, which is $1,200 per pound of payload. What does this mean for SpaceX's business model? As of today, SpaceX makes money in two key ways. Number one. Space Launch Service SpaceX builds rockets and uses them to send cargo to space on behalf of NASA and private companies. NASA regularly needs help to transport people and goods to the ISS, and private companies such as Telesat rely on satellites in space to provide telecom services. Number 2. Starlink SpaceX also sells access to Starlink, which provides high-speed internet connection to rural locations across the globe. Starlink charges $110 per month and a one-time $599 equipment fee. They currently have 400,000 subscribers in more than 36 countries. SpaceX is a private company, so nailing down their exact finances is tricky. The company's last publicly reported revenue figure is approximately $2 billion per year. According to some estimates, it costs SpaceX $30 million to build each Falcon 9 rocket. At $62 million in revenue per launch, SpaceX SpaceX's margin per launch is 30 million. The Falcon 9 is only partially reusable, which means it needs to be refurbished after each launch. But the booster, which makes up approximately 80% of the rocket's total cost, is recovered and can be reused. This means that SpaceX margins will continue to increase the more rockets it launches and reuses, tapping into the beautiful concept of economies of scale the cost advantage companies experience when production becomes efficient. Relativity Space believes they've found a way to solve SpaceX's biggest problem. Building rockets is clearly a capital-intensive and expensive process, but the cost of each launch can drastically be decreased if you're able to mass-produce rockets using 3D printing. Tim Ellis co-founded Relativity Space in 2015 with Jordan Noon after spending five years working at Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. Blue Origin was his first job out of college, and despite the glamorous gig, he left the company with $100,000 worth of student loans still outstanding. His master's and bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Southern California was anything but cheap. Tim grew up in Plano, Texas, and as a kid he was obsessed with Legos. He met his co-founder Jordan while they were both students at the USC and involved in the Rocket Propulsion Lab, a student group that builds its own rockets. After college, Jordan went on to work for SpaceX, and Tim led ambitious projects at Blue Origin, including figuring out how 3D metal printing works. But his managers didn't see this as a priority, until he talked himself into a meeting with Jeff Bezos. I was told no by my manager and my manager's manager that you know they were never gonna do 3D printing, but I still kept at it and I was refining my numbers about how much cheaper and faster it was gonna be. And then ultimately I remember getting a very brief meeting with Jeff and you know he essentially like in the room was like, Tim, I'm one of the richest people in the world. Of course we can do this. And I was like, yeah, that's what I've been saying. And so then we I bought the first metal 3D printer at Blue Origin. And, and started kicking off the 3D printing division. Despite getting Bezos' approval, Tim realized that an entire company needed to be built to focus on space-related 3D printing efforts. And if someone was going to do it, why couldn't it be him? Tim left Blue Origin at age 25, and Jordan left SpaceX when he was 23, and together they set out to build the world's largest 3D printer to be used for their rockets. They were accepted into Y Combinator in 2016, and cold emailed Mark Cuban who committed to investing $500,000 just a few minutes later. At its core, 3D printing is an automation technology. By reducing the inputs needed to build a rocket, including the parts, tools, and labor, relativity space can significantly increase the speed of production while decreasing the cost. 
This becomes a hyper iterative process. In early stage startups, the goal is to find product market fit as soon as possible. If you're able to create a product and test it with short feedback loops, you can constantly learn and improve it until you've built something that truly works and that has serious demand. Relativity's business model works similar to that of SpaceX. They sell cargo space on their rockets to organizations such as NASA and Telesat. They currently have two launch sites in the US, and according to Ellis, its first rocket, the Terran 1, is the most pre-sold rocket in history. It's on track for its first launch later this year. Relativity is also working on another rocket called the Terran R, a fully reusable rocket that Relativity plans to launch to Mars sometime between 2024 and 2025 in collaboration with Impulse Space, another space startup founded in 2021. Tim Ellis and Jordan Noon are both incredibly talented, and they deserve cred for embarking on this ambitious journey. The company has raised close to $1.3 billion to date, has 700 employees, and claims to have the most competent team in the industry with several senior executives from SpaceX. That being said, they haven't demonstrated a ton of progress yet. Relativity is already valued at $4.2 billion, but still needs to do its first demo launch. Also worth to note that co-founder Jordan Noon is leaving Relativity Space to launch a new venture. Contrary to common belief, space exploration is more than just a joyride for billionaires. In addition to hopefully securing another planet for mankind to live on in case we keep ruining our existing planet, space also brings important benefits for us on Earth such as GPS navigation, communication, and data to measure climate change. Satellites help us track greenhouse gas emissions, deforestation, melting ice caps, and sea level rise. Climate change is arguably the most pressing issue faced by humanity today, and one of the world's most controversial entrepreneurs is trying to rebrand himself by solving it. Watch this video next to learn how Adam Newman plans to fight climate change using blockchain technology. Thanks a lot.